Hello, my name is Lisa Adams and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in Dr. Daldo Bling's lab at Stanford. In this short presentation, I will discuss highlights from our recent Clinical Perspectives article published in AJR. Our article addresses the current state of the art of paramoxetol enhanced MRI in children and young adults. Paramoxetol is an ultra-small iron oxide nanoparticle. It was originally approved in 2009 by the FDA for IV treatment of iron deficiency in adults with chronic kidney disease. The agent contains an iron oxide core and a carboxymethyl dextrin coat. Due to its large molecular size, paramoxetol exhibits only minor leakage into the extravascular space of visceral organs for several hours. This leads to a long intravascular half-life time of over 14 hours. Paramoxetol nanoparticles leak from the vasculature in reticular endothelial system tissues. There, they are cleared by macrophage phagocytosis supported by the agent's coating. As a result, iron is metabolized over several days and weeks. Because injection speed is a potential risk factor for pseudoallergies related to complement activation, the FDA cautions against paramoxetol bolus injections and instead recommends supervised slow infusion over a minimum of 15 minutes. Unlike conventional MRI contrast agents that are based on the rare earth metal gadolinium, ferromoxetol is biodegradable and carries no potential risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. At FDA-approved doses, ferromoxetol demonstrates no long-term tissue retention in patients with intact iron metabolism. It provides unique MRI properties, including long-lasting vascular retention in the blood pool phase and retention in reticular endothelial system tissues in the delayed phase. Drawing on our institutional experience, its off-label use as an MRI contrast agent can support a variety of clinical applications in pediatric patients and young adults. This includes vascular with pre- and post-transplant, cardiac and cancer imaging. In our article, we also describe the current advances in preclinical and clinical research with ferromoxetol in terms of cellular and molecular imaging and as a novel potential cancer therapeutic. Because of its long intravascular half-life time, ferromoxetol does not require precise bolus timing to obtain high-quality MRI angiography. It provides high spatial resolution in the equilibrium phase, enhancing arterial and venous systems to a similar extent. This allows simultaneous MRI angiography and venography. Indications of for ferromoxetol-based vascular imaging in pediatric patients include assessment of vascular anatomy before and after transplantation. It can also be used to assess vascular abnormalities such as arteriovenous malformations. At our institution, additional ferromoxetol-enhanced 4D flow sequences are performed in patients with suspected vascular anomalies to differentiate high and slow flow lesions. Here we see a patient with an arteriovenous malformation in the left supraclavicular region, region adjacent to the left brachial plexus that was assessed by 3 Tesla MRI after slow administration of ferromoxetol. In panel D, ferromoxetol enhanced 4D flow MRI illustrates the direction of blood flow in arterial inflow and venous outflow for treatment purposes. The arrow indicates the dominant feeder artery, and in this patient, paramoxetol MRI allowed quantification and measurement of blood flow in both feeder arteries and draining vein. The off-label use of paramoxetol as an MRI contrast agent has also been extended to cancer imaging. Here we see a young patient with a desmoplastic small round cell tumor who was examined by 3 Tesla FDG PET MRI. The study was performed immediately after bolus administration of a gadolinium-based contrast agent and 24 hours after slow administration of ferromoxetol. Uptake in the RES organs resulted in a decreased signal from the liver, spleen and bone marrow onto two weighted images and improved tumor delineation in these organs. Comparison of panels B and D shows that fat-saturated T1-weighted ferromoxetol MRI demonstrates less enhancement of the tumor nodules compared with liver, resulting in high tumor-to-liver contrast. In addition, hypertense vascular enhancement by ferromoxetol allows clear localization of the tumor relative to the vessels. PET provides important additional information about hypermetabolic tumor nodules. In recent years, the use of paramoxetol in pediatric cancer imaging has been investigated in clinical trials and translated into clinical practice at several North American institutions. 
In addition to its inclusion in RES organs, two other properties of ferromoxytol support its use in cancer imaging. First, large ferromoxytol particles do not readily extravasate into most tissues and exhibit differential microvascular permeability in benign and malignant tumors. While ferromoxytol can extravasate through leaky microvessels in malignant tissues, it is unable to penetrate the intact wall of microvessels of benign tissues resulting in positive enhancement of malignant but not benign tumors. Second, as a macrophage marker, ferromoxytol can non-invasively monitor response to macrophage modulating immunotherapies. Other experimental oncology molecular imaging applications are currently ongoing. At our institution, we also use ferromoxytol-enhanced PET MRI off-label for gadolinium-free whole-body cancer staging in children and young adults. We have observed similar sensitivity for cancer staging of gadolinium-based contrast agent-enhanced FDG PET MRI and ferromoxytol-enhanced PET MRI, suggesting that ferromoxytol can be used as a gadolinium-free alternative for cancer staging by PET MRI. In our experience, FDG PET and ferromoxytol-enhanced MRI provide complementary information with a combined technique providing more information than either alone. As a highlight and summary statement in our article, we report that the off-label use of the iron oxide particle ferromoxytol as an MRI contrast agent represents an alternative to conventional gadolinium-based contrast agents for several clinical applications in children and young adults. I hope that I have been able to give you a little taste of what we will be covering in the paper and hope you enjoy reading it. Thank you very much for your time.